Scaro! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number 930. I am Stephen in Edmonton. Warren in Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. And here we go, kids. It's happening after weeks, months of guessing, <laughs> speculating. Agonizing on your part. Agonizing on my part. When and where Doctor Who would be airing slash releasing. We finally have it, kids. November 25th. The first David Tennant special, and then two Saturdays after that. It's two Saturdays. So the so the fourteenth Doctor era will last precisely three Saturdays, um, with uh, the Wild Blue Yonder following on December second, and the Giggle on December ninth. Uh, the big news That's of the week. Yeah, a lot longer than the eighth Doctor era. It was, yeah, one night only. Yeah, no, I I'd long speculated that it would be uh be um Thanksgiving. On Disney Plus, a nice way to sort of launch it and stuff, but uh, but that's not the case. Uh, I, I long thought that, uh, well, Disney wouldn't want to put stuff out on Saturdays because that's not a traditional streaming drop date for Disney. This is good. It is now. And they just said, oh, fine, Saturday. <laughs> so there you go. Mm -hmm. Now, how long no, after um, them? Because like it comes out, let's say, 11 o'clock my time. Uh, but Disney's going to drop it probably like six o'clock uh, uh, Pacific time. I would think. Uh -uh. You don't know. You I don't know? here's here's okay. So let's let's uh, let's speculate a little bit about. <laughs> yeah, let's hash out the time now that we know the day. Well, uh, so I remember as as the date approach approached because there was a lot of chatter about November twenty fifth being the day, the Saturday after the actual anniversary, about being the the broadcast day um, for it on the BBC. Now, uh, the actual press release dropped at precisely 11.30 uh, a.m. Pacific time on okay. both the BBC and Disney+. Plus. That leads me to believe that it's going to be 6.30 p.m. UK time on Saturday, uh, the 25th of November on both BBC and Disney. I think it's going to drop at the same time. That's my... I think it'll be my... like out, out during the afternoon or, or late morning for us. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think it's the it same does, time. But... I think it's the same time. That is that is my guess. Just based on on the way that they. I mean, I was looking through the wording. I know this was a pre premieres exclusively in the UK on on BBC. Uh, but and and maybe it'll drop right on iPlayer at the same time too. Because I don't think it does that. I think they wait until it airs and then it goes on iPlayer. And yeah, that, maybe that yeah. changes this time around too. I don't know. Given how many people have cut the cable now, um, I think my <laughs> my latest prediction. With the full full understanding that my previous ones have been wrong, which I want you to ignore it at this point, I think they drop at the exact same time. That's my guess. That's why I mean, I was, I'd be that happy was what, if they do. Yeah, I'd be happy if they do. But we'll I see. hope they I hope they do it. I hope it's not like where they keep shifting. Around, oh, this week it's going to be you know six twenty five or some nonsense. You know, because the, the British start times have always been weird to we in North America. You never start a show at six twenty five. What are you doing? You know. Um, so my guess is at the least the very first one uh, will drop both at the same time um, at at eleven thirty a.m. Pacific, twelve thirty Mountain for us, two thirty <laughs> Eastern, and then you could figure out the rest yourself. I'm just poking around the BBC Media Center mm -hmm. site, right? And for week forty eight, which starts with Saturday, November twenty fifth, there's oh. absolutely no program highlights. That, no information that at all. Uh, week yet. Yet. <laughs> yet. So nothing, nothing to say like, oh, we're we're gonna have strictly it on on the Saturday as well, or right. we're gonna have don't scare the hair or <laughs> please if only. or whatever, yeah. um, to, to try to figure out a broadcast time. Try to you know, try to find out where the hour or so in between is gonna be. Yeah, no. I mean, I hope it does drop at the same time because then I have to sit on a VPN. Not that I'd ever do that. No, and we watch would never whatever do that the one. hell abomination they have before Doctor <laughs> Who. Yeah, what's what's on Saturday? It's been so long. I don't remember what's on Saturdays on BBC One now before Doctor Who would air. Is it this pointless? is why you lost your empire, Britain. Yeah, you know, it's got to be celebrity pointless. Cruelty, but yeah, I, uh, like Barry from EastEnders on Celebrity Pointless or something like that. And uh, oh, you know, the, the credits roll. It's like, oh, here we go. Uh, the bunch of dogs walking in the BBC intro. Now it starts. Or someone told. And then a Dalek in the background, very subtly for no reason. Yeah. Well, we might not have to worry about that. Might might we might be able for the first time, as if we've ever done that in the past, what to watch actual Doctor Who 
um, on our screen. And in, uh, you know, Disney Plus uh, does 4K um, and also 5.1. Because because for those of you, none of us, of course, would ever have done this, uh, to have watched it through a VPN live on BBC One would get like, you know, a stereo signal coming through and like 720p. Like this mm-hmm. is this is most of our first watch of Doctor Who is sort of this touch mushy, let's put it that way. A little bit. And like sometimes you're just waiting for that little uh you know, um <laughs> loading <laughs> circle to pop oh, up. Oh yeah. My you know? my nemesis, my the, alleged nemesis, the, the, the pink circle going around. Oh the terror that uh but but now for uh for us, hopefully uh, at the exact same time we can watch it on, on Disney Plus without having to worry about that. In the UK on iPlayer it'll be available in four K um for the first time ever they'll actually be broadcasting this in ultra hd on bbc oh it'll be 4k on disney plus too absolutely well i know that but in the uk it hasn't happened yet so i see what you're saying okay um which also kind of leads me to believe like 4k on bbc iplayer is is part of an ongoing experiment so says cord busters uh in their in their article about this um i wonder if this means that it will go on iplayer simultaneous to it being broadcast on bbc one and not immediately after broadcast is, is well, what I, I can, i'm wondering I can, you know i can tell you this um 720p is and i have a pretty good internet connection uh-huh. test it's it's not robust with the iplayer when i'm lying my possibly lying my way through through the continents yeah. so there's no way i'd be watching it in 4k no. on iplayer on disney for sure no this you know understand that folks this is three people that watch stuff on um on tvs I know a lot of people watch things on, on laptops and phones and stuff. Or like phones. That. Yeah, we're not those people. We can't do that. We're not good at it. <laughs> no we're way old. I'm... That's what we are. We're yeah, old. I know. I can't. I want to watch it on a big screen. Damn I it. need my TV big. <sighs> yep. That's who we are. So we're I don't know why I'm a TV. yokel as well. But... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, so that's exciting, right? It's exciting that we have a proper actual broadcast. There's, there's promo photos. There was a trailer. Both for a BBC version and a Disney Plus version, with the well, where the, you might as well go into your zapruitering now. Well, yeah. So, um, just before recording, I I I, uh, I saw that a couple days ago that somebody had had said that. Wait a second, if you look at this one shot behind Neil Patrick Harris, sort of running towards the camera, there's a whole bunch of uh, of rose petals falling in the, in the building that they're in. And in the background, you can see out of focus uh, in the distance, a, a woman in a coat and what looks to be red hair. And somebody says, oh, that looks like it's Bonnie Langford. Oh, I said to myself, come on. And then and then I looked closely I looked at the coat she was wearing in there and the length of her hair. And then I looked at uh, the picture that the BBC put out themselves of Bonnie Langford announcing her return to Doctor Who. And the first clue was, wait a second, I think that's the same coat. And I think that's the same length of hair. And then what clinched it for me is you look at the wide shot in the same promo video of Unit HQ, the helicopter pad that they they bought secondhand from the Avengers. Um, you look in the background where the entrance to the helicopter pad is. It's the same background that Bonnie Langford is standing in front of in that very same official release photo. So, folks, I think Bonnie Langford's in the in the giggle as well. Spoiler but, alert! But they said she's in a Shooty Gawa season, right? Exactly. Or did I just, yeah, guess that. Oh, no, so yeah. she's gonna be in both. All right, okay. She's gonna be in both. Yeah, by the looks of it. So, so we're not. That's not a. Well, it is. A, it's not a spoiler because we're just speculating on stuff that we've seen officially released. Yeah, we could be wrong. I had no public, idea public that Bonnie Langford was in these. Well, what's that, Chris? Oh pu- yeah, pub- publicly released content. Yeah. yeah, so so there we go, and that's just, that's just us gleaning stuff. So yeah, I mean, could be wrong. Maybe she's not. Maybe maybe they put her in there to <laughs> to thwart people. Like, uh, me- remember the the trailer for series twelve, Jodie Whittaker's second season, and they sh- and when they show up, it goes the doctor or doctor the doctor and stuff. That was that shot of them coming to the dinner party. They actually CG'd out Sasha Dewan in that shot of the true, trailer. Yeah, yeah. So. But no. Yeah, and in all the promo promo stills as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, are you planning on talking about your other more tenuous um, uh, link to the past? <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, which one? The, the other the other promo thing from the giggle. Oh, oh right. I yeah, I saw. I'm 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 more d- dubious than this one. Somebody somebody posted this on Twitter too that I saw that. Uh, so there's there's new profile photo, including the very first image that we've had from Wild Blue Yonder with this little uh, sort of makeshift robot um, in the background with the, with the Doctor and Donna in this weird looking 
almost like cartoony drawn world. It's a very, it's a very weird. It looks like a cargo hold or something. Yeah. What a, what a interesting episode that's going to be. Um, <laughs> but it, it looks very fake. Like it looks like you see the glass, glass shot or something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Um, no, someone anyway. on some, someone on the social medias, uh, looked at the photo with, uh, the, the official image from the, the, the giggle where Neil Patrick Harris there is throwing a bunch of cards and in the background you can see what I think is like Campbell Singer from Celestial Toymaker Part 1 in the background on the thing there, which might be him. Maybe it might be Carmen Salvera in the, on the other clown too. It might be the actual clowns from the Celestial Toymaker from 1966. But uh, on the, what is it, the Jack or the, car, or the King card? Yeah, on the, the left. Yeah. On the left there. Somebody said that uh, is that potentially uh, one of the Morbius toxers? I, I think that's a real stretch. I, it could just be a jack. On it a could car. be a guy in a hat, you know. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I'm looking. I'm looking at the Morbius doctor photo, and I don't know which one it would be. And it's kind of blurry. But uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. But the the Bonnie Langford one seems seems pretty legit, folks. Go and look at it yourself. You know. We're not going to link it in the show. Well, we'll know in a few weeks, I guess. Yeah. 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 Chris, do you have any thoughts about uh, Doctor Who going back to Saturdays? Uh, Where you think it's going to drop on Disney Plus? Do you have any any thoughts and opinions on that? I mean, there were lots of reasons why Sunday kind of made sense for the Whitaker era. Mm Mm-hmm. But Saturday is still like the the tradition. And so I'm... You know, nostalgia is a power, is a powerful drug, and and the whole Saturday thing, I I kind of like on the whole. Um, that's what it is better for us. It's better. <laughs> oh, it's like, absolutely better for us. Yeah, face it. it's better. You know, as much as I sort of said, well, why are we beholden to Saturdays? You know, it could just drop at a certain time. You know, on a Thursday or something. Um, well, I guess Saturdays are as fine as any. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know what to expect as far as the Disney Plus drop time uh goes and uh, i i sus- i suspect you're probably right in that it's gonna you know be some well, quote unquote simulcast whatever yeah it's gonna drop at the same time as the bbc one um bbc one broadcast but something tells me disney is gonna prefer something and it's only three episodes for the first bit here anyway i realize mm-hmm. but i suspect disney's gonna want something more stable and obviously, BBC BBC One broadcast times are anything but. Yeah. So I don't know if we're gonna um, have maybe Disney Plus's influence over, you know, kind of have their influence telling the BBC make sure it's at seven p.m. Right. Uh, seven p.m. GMT. Uh, every 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 time for these three episodes, or if if they're just gonna say we're gonna drop it at. We're going to drop it at, at, at 7 p.m., regardless of what BBC One does. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, There's there's more information yet to be had. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, and it's not like, the, you know, Dizzy isn't, like, they don't have to, like, program their servers weeks out. I mean, it was at the premiere of Ahsoka the week before it was destined to to um, start on Disney+, Plus, where they said, actually, instead of Wednesdays, it's coming out Tuesdays now. Yeah, yeah, we just we changed the drop date. By the way, we just changed it right now. So I mean, that's a little different because they own that outright. But uh, yeah, we'll that's see. true. They could do it uh, willy nilly whenever they like. But uh, but you know they've been very they've been um they've been working towards like prime time drops on weekdays at the very least for a while now. Like the man the first series of the Mandalorian, they dropped like midnight Pacific, and and now they you know Loki and Ahsoka dropped like in you know in the early early evening because they're like five or six or something like that. Well. I was just going to say other yeah. another thing that none of this is ever going to happen, but I'm just glad that BBC, RTD, and Disney, none of them are fans of the Amazon drop it all at once. Oh, God. Because that would worst. suck. That would just be the worst. I mean, uh, you say Amazon. Netflix is really the big... Uh... Well, I've, I've got rid of Netflix years ago, so I don't know. I have Amazon <laughs> so because I have Prime because I get stuff delivered. Right. And, and then I occasionally go, oh, yeah, I guess I have these videos too. So Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, But it does irritate me. I'm like, oh, it's 10 wheel at times. I'm not going to get through these. It just stops me from watching because I'm like, oh, it seems like a lot. I know. I've always thought like if, if it's worth dropping all, all at once, it's not worth watching right away, is it? Because you're not worried about us yeah. spoiling Again, it anything or, you is, know? This is a 52-year-old man saying this. I'm sure there are plenty yeah. of people younger than me who are like, oh, what the hell? I want to watch it all now. Like, Or older than me. Who knows? Like, yeah. 
Well, I mean, no, just my personal preference is not to do that. So. Oh God, no, no. I, I even, I even think Netflix, like they're dropping Netflix is, um, uh, last season, the crown, which is coming out soon. They're dropping the first half at a certain point and then the second half later on. So even they are starting to buckle a little bit when it comes to, uh, how mm-hmm. they're, how they're releasing. But that might things. be a cost thing too. Like, yeah. Affecting the balance sheet. Cause that, that and stranger things are insanely expensive from what I read. Yeah. 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 Stranger things is another one where they, where they did that there. No, I, Amazon, um, Erica watches upload that show that's, uh, that's mm-hmm. on Amazon mm-hmm. and, uh, they drop an episode a week too for that. So okay. they did so for, for, um, rings of power. So well, that's and, right. They did. You're right. Yeah. And other things too. So yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't. Disney Plus is I actually know that's weird because Disney Plus it's that Echo show which is a spinoff of a spinoff I don't know I don't know these Marvel it's shows Daredevil spinoff I think I don't remember. is it uh, or no it's I can't remember I can't keep track of this no crap. it's tough isn't it um I think they were they were going to drop that all at once uh when, whenever it comes time which shows you oh, how she much shows up in Hawkeye that's what it is sure uh which shows you how much confidence they have in that project perhaps that's uh, just there take it you watch it all now just go away. But they won't do that with Doctor Who. Um, Saturdays uh, on Disney Plus and BBC One and iPlayer. Exciting times. Exciting times, kids. Doctor Who. Come back. Come back in a month. Less than a month now. Officially. Officially, we have times. He's back. And it's about time. It's about time. Yeah. How is it? Uh, I kind of liked it, actually, seeing the um, the arc in the Disney Plus logo be the TARDIS, and then it bounced off the plus there in the trailer. I both liked it and was ashamed of myself for liking it because yeah. of no logo feelings from the 90s. Uh, no, no logo feeling, I suppose. Not, yeah. Naomi Klein book about uh, brands and all that. And mm. so a little, a small part of my Gen X body was like, oh, I like this and I don't like that I like yeah. this. <laughs> it's, I mean, Chris, you were saying it still feels weird that like, you know, <laughs> variety of deadline Hollywood is are like, you know, dropping embargoed press releases about Doctor Yeah, Hollywood Reporter, like yeah. all that stuff. Like any any of the big uh uh well, anything non British really, but the, yeah. big, the big American stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Our little show has grown up here in its sixtieth anniversary year. <laughs> I mean it grew up long before that, let's be honest. But yeah, it's true. It's too. grown up and it's about time. <laughs> It's close to getting a pension. Six years. Yeah, old. just keep doing that through the whole episode. I Unless uh, it lives getting, in Alberta, it's yeah. getting ready to draw from the Alberta pension plan. Ah, <laughs> topical local, and local, local content. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, uh, hey, um, Doctor Who continues to be made. This I still find this absolute madness. They are they officially this past week started shooting Shooty Gatwa's second season. It's months from now that we'll even see his first season. They will have almost had two entire seasons in the can before we even see a proper uh, Shudi Gatwa that season. That is lunacy. It is madness, I tell you. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. despite what I said about releasing a week to week, maybe BBC, if you could screw it up and just leak it all, that'd be fine. No, <laughs> that'd be bad. Get, 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 get Marcelo Camargo on it. <laughs> uh, get all Camargo. <laughs> Get the Camargo theory. We got to caption it I somewhere. I feel so sorry for that guy. I probably, he probably had nothing to do with this. His name just happened to be on it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody stole his files. I don't know. Um, I want to see that documentary, by the way. Whenever they come to do these uh, big, uh, expansive documentaries on Blu-ray sets, I want to see that for the uh, for the Series 8 box set about the Marcella Camargo. Um, the, so the seems before, unlikely. Yeah. Before we were talking about, uh, before we were recording, we were talking about the, the big uh, all new Who anniversary set thing. Right. Come, uh, that comes out in a few weeks' time. Um, so, I mean, I bought the, or God given as a gift, the complete Capaldi Blu-ray set, mm-hmm. however, many, however many years ago when that came out. And then this is coming out. The blue, the blue, the original Blu-ray set, or this one, would have been a great place to have a, a bit of VAM on, on Camargo and, and that right. situation. And it hasn't happened. Uh, I don't expect that it will. No. Well, unless uh, unless you know the current That's... crew who are doing the the collection sets work work, work their way into the um, you know because enough time will have passed by the time they get done the classic series it will have been over twenty years since well over twenty years since like the show came back so mm-hmm. like it's perfect time for retrospectives you know you might get Eccleston on camera talking That's... about the time of Doctor Who you know. The Camargo thing might also be the, the kind of domain of like you know the Toby Hadokes of the world. 
where it's looking for Marcelo Camargo. Yep, uh, a yeah. deep dive. Yeah, it'll be a little documentary nestled in there around Robot, I'm sure, went along with the uh, dropped clips that were from there. Yeah. Well, yeah. given they're in the Camargo release, I mean, they could yeah. definitely tie that together. Absolutely. Yeah. They yeah. should make it like a puzzle that has to be unlocked and for you, for you to watch it. <laughs> to watch um, the, uh, just yeah, to throw a bit of context out there for those who aren't aware from Please stuff do. from twenty from twenty fourteen. <laughs> Please do. So there was a originally a scene in Robot of Sherwood toward the end of a beheading. Uh the leaked Camargo version had it included, you know, no effects, whatever, just the, the work print. But the final broadcast of Robot of Sherwood had that scene removed because Around the same time, there was like yeah, an ISIS actual ISIS beheading, it. yeah, mm-hmm. and and it was deemed that the, the Doctor Who bit would have been probably too insensitive or whatever. Which yeah. I agree with, honestly. Whatever I do too. Yeah, they chopped it like literally that week. Like it was like excised yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah, it was a yeah it was really late in the game. Yeah. Um, as far as your <laughs> your 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 wonder, your wonder at at uh, you know two full series of. Of got was uh, a tenure being in the can before we see a, a frame of it. Mm-hmm. I suppose the fact they're only doing nine episodes versus 10, yeah. 12, 13, You're right? Uh, as in the past, probably helps out in, uh, in expediency. It's oh, it does take a long time. Like, there, I can't remember who it is now, but um, oh, God, yeah. Uh, one of the producers on the new season, I can't remember her name, but her agency page says she's working from it like October through July. Like it takes as long now to make nine episodes of Doctor Who as it did, as it did 13. Four, 13 or 14 back in the day because, you know, yeah. they, they, I mean, they cranked those things out in like 12, 13 days on the primary shoot in, you know, mm-hmm. in the, in the classic modern series, we can almost start calling this now. Um, classic. The, yeah. The Clodrin series. Cause I think it took like a month basically to shoot each of the three specials that we're about to watch in November and December. Like I remember, you know, hearing the reports and stuff and there's like Talalay tweeting out stuff and they, oh, she's still, still working on it. Like it's been a month she's been shooting this episode. So I think they're taking a long time to make these things. So. I wonder just how expensive it's going to look compared to... Because Jodie Whittaker's uh, era did not look bad. And no. so if this looks better, then we're in for a treat. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty good in the trailers. And just, mm-hmm. just you know, just the way that, like, like the lighting and, and, and the, not the film grain, but, you know, the quality of the picture looks different mm-hmm. now of Tenet. Like, that's our one... Tenet and Noble, we've seen shots of them and how they look in Doctor Who now compared to how they looked in 2008. And it feels like night and day to me right now, well, you know? Just, just, I was looking at Loki and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of film grain. And I'm like, oh wait, this isn't shot on... So I looked it up, it's shot on a Sony Venice, which is like a digital camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the, the it's astounding how close or equal to film stuff looks, at least on a TV. Yeah. Nowadays. Although, of course, that does make me want to uh, watch the 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 unprocessed raw footage. Oh, absolutely! So, so that it looks like either a a season twenty six story or maybe maybe some Bill Bags thing from the nineteen nineties. Which well, would it's you like know. the thing you sent me with uh, the test footage from Nemesis, where it's on videotape and it's, it's Picard and Tom Hardy. Whatever the hell is in that game? Shins on that's a yeah. terrible movie. But anyway, it is really cool to see them on videotape. <laughs> They're on videotape. I it's so funny. I sent you that uh, clip war, and literally the next day, somebody just some fa- I think Io Nine or Den of Geek just randomly posted that. Uh, mm-hmm. because it's been around for a long time. I know, it's but so like cool to they, see it on videotape. Twice in two days uh, after 20 years. Yeah, I know. Yeah, multicam videotape, brightly lit, uh, Picard and Tom Hardy uh, having a conversation. I just feels now, like, I wow. sell this and I'm like, why can't you up- update the 35 mil yeah. Deep Space Nine? Damn you. Shocking, so I contain multitudes is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You do. You do indeed. Um, yeah. Uh, what else is that? Oh, yeah, because they're they're shooting the second season right now. Um, but going back to the first season, which we haven't seen, but is rap production. Uh, the they have announced writers for one of those episodes is uh, Kate Heron and Brian Redmond, uh, a writing team. Uh, Kate Heron directed all six episodes mm-hmm. of Loki season two. No one season one season one. Sorry, season yeah. one of Loki directed them all. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And it's women too, and new women to talk to. And they've which done. Is a, I can look them up, and they've done a bunch of shorts. So, they have done a bunch so, of shorts, but I guess too. on the strength of the shorts, I got hired to write this episode. Go well, good for them. Um, and and this is this is the first series, right? But now we we have to actually like like uh, read this carefully because they're in the midst of making the second series mm-hmm. before we've even seen the first series. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we'll feature an episode. Of the new series of Doctor Who will feature an episode written by them. So so that's pretty cool. It's interesting that they waited to now to announce it, but um. 
but they have. So that's good. So it isn't all written by RTD, which is also a good thing. You know, if you're looking to diversify your, your writing pool, it's, it's probably good. Um, especially <laughs> given the, the WGA strikes that we just, uh, lived through survived. Um, that isn't just one person sort of doing it like the guy that makes that Yellowstone show. Um, so that's cool. Looking forward Him to that. And a barrel of cocaine. Allegedly. Uh, thank you for putting that in, Warren. That's great. Ah, uh, what else is the big, uh, the, the news list on this show, kids, is it's silly. <laughs> it's quite something. Uh, so bear with us. Um, coming, coming soon to BBC One, uh, there's a four part series called Imagine. There's a, there are documentaries about um, people in entertainment. Uh, and, th- and they've done this before. Uh, and uh, there's going to be four films coming up on French and Saunders, Pet Shop Boys, the opening in Manchester's Aviva Studios, and for our purposes, Russell T. Davies. Uh, it will be a big documentary about him. It's called Russell T. Davies, The Doctor and Me. Uh, who knows when it's... They haven't actually announced a broadcast or drop date for it, um, but one assumes it'll probably be around either Doctor Who returning in November or Doctor Who returning uh, full time, so to speak, in in the spring. I know that the Pet Shop Boys one is is airing in the spring. They made special mention of that, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was like after all the specials have run, and but before, or maybe you know Christmas or something like that. Oh, in be- yeah, like in betwixt, um, yeah, t- in betwixt. Tenant and Gatwad, so that they can actually mm-hmm. show clips of the um, the the. the so you can show specials. behind the scenes stuff from all three, right? That's true, and not have to worry about spoilers. Yeah, not not that I have any insight in that when this was made no. and how. So no, that's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. So I like a good documentary. So that's uh, that's oh, speaking of documentaries, there's that documentary coming up on November first. This is a big week coming up too. By mm-hmm. the way, you know, November first is when a whole bunch of stuff drops on iPlayer and. Uh, uh, and, um, BBC sounds as we'll get to, and then there's that documentary narrated by David Tennant coming out on the first as well. Exciting times, man. No actual new episodes or anything yet, but, uh, it'll be fun. There's a, there's a, um, there's a preview in Empire Magazine. Uh, if you, if you want to read Empire Magazine, there's like a one page preview where they had an exclusive pick of, of David Tennant in a, in a room. Would you have I highly before? recommend their podcast. They are very funny. Oh, are they really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. yep. Okay. It's a good film podcast. Yeah. Um, they also put out a, um, uh, the, the official Doctor Who YouTube channel put out the behind the scenes uh, video for David Tennant's regeneration. They hadn't actually released this until, until this past week. They shot this May 13th, 2022. 2022. A year and a half. Golly. Wow. A year and a half. Yep. Yeah. Um, which they shot. Yeah, God, that's right. And they shot, <laughs> I can't remember when they shot Jodie Whittaker's last scenes even. That was like, it was we. this was, was weeks after a they while before. finished yeah. that. Yeah. So, uh, they as, as, we're, as we were talking about offline the other day, apparently the, this is now the, uh, the, the longest gap between regeneration and first episode for any doctor. Yeah. Or doctors. That's, uh, that's something. Wow. Tennis probably like he's long since gone. Long since gone from Doctor Who. He Again. probably is, yeah. 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 You know. But it's cool. It's cool seeing that, you know, people on set, just a bunch of green screen lining up the original shot from Power of the Doctor. Rachel Talley being there, directing it all. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool behind the scenes. Well, the interesting thing is Ben Pickles did the effects for, uh, for, for both, really. Yep. So, so, and she's, that's how he got his job is through her. So that's, so she was probably just talking to him the whole time about how to coordinate all this. Mm, yeah. Maybe this, uh, maybe this bit of van, maybe an extended version will be on the Blu-ray set because the 60th anniversary specials are now available in the UK to pre-order the Steelbook DVD and Blu-ray. They're coming out December 11th. Let me tell you, I'm a little concerned about that just because what year was it? Uh, that the, uh, the, it happened in the Moffat years where the, where the Blu-ray set came out. Like they were pretending it to release like literally like three days after it, uh, the last episode broadcast and then it came out, like they shipped like a week early. So people, Oh yeah. And, but everybody shut up. Everyone, Nobody said anything from the name of the doctor and the big giveaway. Was it name of the doctor or was it the, was it a Capaldi one? I don't even remember anymore. Oh, um, I think it was name of the doctor. It might've been. I thought for some reason I thought it was a Capaldi one, but maybe I'm just compiling all my Cam- Camargo leaks in, in the, in the one story. But I mean, I could be getting this wrong too, but yeah. I seem to recall that nobody gave away the game for that. No, no, they were they were pretty good. Doctor Who fans, good work on that. So hopefully, uh, if any of you get the specials Blu-rays early, you'll shut up about it. 
Uh, cause that'll be awful. It was a different time in terms of social media. They probably won't. That's true. it will be all over blue sky or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's a whole host of uh, extras on this thing too that have been announced, like scene breakdowns, like in vision, com- in vision commentaries. <laughs> That's a flashback to series too. Man, right? In vision commentaries for both the Giggle and the Star Beast, which is astounding. Like, it, 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 is RTD responsible for this too? I feel like he's he's behind the um, Return to Saturday Nights. I feel like he's driving the bus, be- you know, Doctor Who being on iPlayer, at least mentioning it and passing that it's something he wanted to do, and then walking away from it and having other people actually do the work. But I feel like the in vision commentary is a thing that RTD probably like. Oh, let's yeah, do those again. Me. Yeah, or it'll, Collinson, one of the two. It'll right? be yeah, it'll be him, Collinson, and. David Tennant there, just like they were in 2005, you know, watching commentaries. Um, Yeah, uh, behind the scenes stuff, like, uh, there's the actual proper amount of extras. Now, I bet you, like, a whole bunch of this will have already been on their official YouTube channel by that point. But you know what? I'm okay with it. I love extras, as you know. Um, So... So uh, that's all going to be on, on the Blu-ray set, which is available for pre-order in the UK only. I've not seen it anywhere outside of the UK yet, so we'll probably get it in yet. May. Yeah, no. yeah. Actually, no, I don't think. I think we'll get it earlier than that. But So that's that's exciting, though. Very quick release. Although, you know what? Ah, God, cause this is what kind of annoys me, though, because, you know, I've, I've been going through the Whitaker um, era right now on my, my pilgrimage. We're almost at the end, folks. And, you know, I, I load up, um, my, my series 11 set and then I finish that and then I go over the shelf and I pull out one DVD or Blu-ray for the next episode and I watch it and I put it away and I pull it and I'm like, come on, why can't you just wait? Why can't you just put the Gatwell one on there too? Or at least put the Gatwell one on the series. You have uh, a life with no problems in it. You know that? I know, but I just, I don't like these single disc releases that I have to slot in there and it takes up as much space as <laughs> an entire such season. It's a non-issue. It's unbelievable. Uh, Come on. Yeah, well. I mean, they're really, anyway, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll all come out in a big one giant set at some point too later on, but anyway. <laughs> Some on, on hollow crystal or something. Hollow crystal. A Kyber crystal, thank you very much. Ah, to Disney movies. Ah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And then you can turn After it After Disney has bought the BBC, of course. Mm-hmm. Naturally, yeah. Then you can watch uh, all of uh, Series 15 on Lightsaber. Lightsaber. Well, here's the great thing. More Cam and Wise will be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. More Cam and Wise. <laughs> more Cam. Um, nah, whatever. Well, it just made you sound like more comma Cam comma and Wise, period. Just like, oh. <laughs> Don't try to distract us from you lamenting about something that's <laughs> completely trivial. Brit- Britain's favorite comedy trio, more Cam and Wise. Sure, yeah. sure. I bet you they cry about DVDs too. They do. We do. Uh, I just, I decide I have to mention this because while I'm remembering, I was, uh, while I was editing podcasts, I had an episode of Bergerac on the side, seeing if I could spot Doctor Who actors. And I, I didn't, uh, to my shame, but then there was a big, uh, I, I missed one. Jack Watling was playing a, a, an elderly golfer with a hat. Jack Watling was from, um, what played Travers in the Web of Fear and Abominable Snowman. So I missed him. Uh, but there's a big stunt from a woman falling off a balcony at the end of this episode. And I thought, oh, I bet you that was Tracy Edden, a.k.a. the only working <laughs> British stunt woman in the 80s in UK TV and film. And it was. She doubled for Ace and remembers the Daleks and Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi. But then assistant floor manager for Bergerac, this episode of Bergerac, Jane Tranter. Yep. Jane oh, wow. Tranter, who now, of course, uh, is one half of the people running Bad Wolf. Who makes Doctor Who? So I thought that was fun. I don't. I don't watch Loki, but I do watch uh, episodes of Bergerac without the audio on. <laughs> nobody. Nobody disbelieves you on that. No, I know. I know you don't. Um, missing episodes are being animated. They're not being returned. They might. You tell you what. They might be returned. Film is fabulous. Is happening on Sunday. We're recording this on the Saturday, so this hasn't happened yet. We alluded to this last week that there's that film collectors a convention in in Leicester that's happening. So. So we're, we're recording this before anything is announced or talked about there. So if any news has come out of there, um, uh, it will have happened, but not for us. But um, uh, it is at the Underwater Menace event, which happened last week at the BFI. They did mention that um, further missing episode animations will happen. Hooray. And the the big one that everyone's sort of like alluding to that it's going to be the Celestial Toymaker because of the return of said Toymaker in an upcoming episode of Doctor Who. So, 
So there, animated stuff. Hey, eh? what do you Ooh. think about that? I'm still, I'm still curious, but not curious enough to follow the money about where the money's coming from. I know, me too. I know. Why are we hung up about that? Uh, because we get hung up about it. But you just talked about DVDs on a shelf. <laughs> we get hung up on things. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, that and we've had, you know, BBC America being involved in Big Finish. Like we've had mm-hmm. um, the financiers change over the years. Mm-hmm. So there's no no reason not to. I don't care who's who's next. Yeah. 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 I don't care. Yeah. Sosu Toy Maker makes sense uh, because of that. And it's also, it sort of breaks them out of the trout and not rut, but you know, everyone's just sort of expecting trout and stuff. And I, I do kind of like that they are, if they are, you know, planning on doing this, that they'll, they'll do them sporad, you know, in a, in a bit of a mishmash style. Like if, if you, if you know what to expect, then it kind of gets boring to see what they're released next. Kind of like the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the collection sets. Like it's the part of the excitement is that, Oh, what's, what's going to be the next one they're going to put out and what's going <laughs> to be on it. You know? Even though you already know everything's going to come out, yeah. Everything's going to come out, but you don't know what order things are going to come out in, you know? And what treats they'll keep in there with uh, James, what's his name? That that director, Pete Matai, and his uh, his companion updates. Yeah, the trailers and stuff, yeah. Which are cool. They are very cool, so. Yeah, so 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 going into a Hartnell now, because they've only done, you know, in, in this new era, they've only done Galaxy 4 um, yeah. of these of this new era of, uh, of animation. So I'm excited to see if they do the Toy Maker or something. You know, something, especially something from the John Wiles era where they don't have any telesnaps. They do have a bunch of, of nice uh, color photos from that. Um, but, you know, it would, it would take a lot more imagination in the Wiles era Hartnell missing episodes. Like the Dalex Master Plan mm-hmm. is going to be like wild. Like we have no images of, of those mm-hmm. things apart from sets and, and the existing three episodes. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know what... I don't know enough about the the finer points of TV production from back then to know if like storyboards were much of a thing to go no, off. Not really. or, this stuff, I really doubt it. No. Yeah. If they're can't. cranking it out that quick, there's no or way. Or if they're just going yeah. based on shooting scripts and costume design documentation. That's pretty and, much it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. of the firm belief with animation that they should just get, not go crazy, but they should definitely embellish a bit because they, why not? They're, they've got this form they're using. Why not? Why not go to town with it? Well, I think Ian Levine will have something to say. <laughs> I don't really care what Ian Levine has to say, to be honest, generally <laughs> yeah. speaking. Yeah. Um, I, uh-huh. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, and, and then just as, as a side thing, there's, there's, every reason to think that there will be some priority put on things like Smugglers and Highlanders just so they can round out season four for right. the Blu-ray release. I suppose so. Neither, neither are the sexiest animated, you know, they, they really seem to be veering away from the historicals, but at some point you're only going to have historicals left. So you got to mm-hmm. start, you know, putting them out there a little mm-hmm. bit, you know, you can't, it can all just be Daleks and Cybermen there animators, but, or fish people. Put them out as a series of oil painting <laughs> telesnaps. Yeah. 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 Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about something and I can't remember what it was now. So I'll just move along. Oh, I was going to say that um, uh, in, in this part of the world, uh, the Underwater Menace is coming to Blu-ray on January 9th. Is it though? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Officially. Oh, it yeah. It's actually right. on BBC <laughs> Shop and Amazon. I've pre-ordered it. I mean, it might be delayed, but I feel like the animated... Oh, maybe the animated ones do get delayed. That's a good point, actually, Warren. Anyway, January 9th. It's still April 2nd for the season 20 set to come out here in North America, which is... Oh, that's silly. Yeah. Very silly. Um, also, on BBC Sounds on uh, November 1st, when everything is going to uh, iPlayer, at least almost everything, and Earth the Child being the notable exception here, uh, uh, missing Doctor Who episodes, like the audiobook versions, are also going to be on BBC Sounds. How about that? So you can, so, so yeah. stuff that hasn't been animated or or there is no uh, Telesnap recons on iPlayer, you can still listen to the um, uh, the audiobook versions. So that's pretty cool. So when mm-hmm. I first saw this, I thought <laughs> briefly and irrationally that they would put Unearthly Child audio up. <laughs> just, just as a big F you to what's his name. So, right. So, so, which it'd be funny if they did. They, uh, there's nothing saying they are. It's just a notion that popped in my yeah, head. Yeah, but, but not, but, but the off air record, like the, the less good, uh, off air. Yeah, exactly. Air. <laughs> just go out of your way to make it as difficult as possible. Just <laughs> no, a complete no, jerk no, move. Not the TV audio. Actually, it'll be, it'll be freshly recorded off air audio. So somebody actually got 
like, you know, a sure SM7B. A fan reconstruction. That's just one guy reading <laughs> yeah. up the whole thing. Mike, Mike'd up their HDTV speaker just to, to, to replicate that off-air recording from 1963 for the official BBC sound stuff. And they got, uh, you know, I don't know, probably... <laughs> I don't know who they got to, re- to narrate it. Caroline Ford narrates it or something like that. It's always Susan. Yeah, it's always, always Susan. <laughs> this time it is Susan doing it. So, so I, I, I like them using BBC Sounds as a platform. Yeah, this. yeah. Because I mean, cool. in, in past, Radio Seven uh, has done you know big finish, big finish stuff on the air and this and that for 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 ephemera. But they uh, have, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Why not BBC Sounds? I mean, that's Good spot. Absolutely. See, I've always forgotten that anything past Radio 4 exists, so. <laughs> past Radio 4. Where's on my old Jolly Wireless? Where's, where's my Doctor Who in the wireless? Is it all Only there? goes to four. Yeah. <laughs> it's on BBC Sounds. Oh, and of course, BBC Sounds is available worldwide, too, so there's no, uh, mm-hmm. there's no, there's no <laughs> Marcelo Camargo embargo and No, re- no there. region locks. No, no region locks at all, so. I wonder why that is, like, that audio seems to have a free pass. Like, I'm not complaining, but I just it's just odd that the TV doesn't and radio does. Because there's probably a difference between actor likenesses and images oh, yes. versus Ooh, just yes. their voices. That's a very yeah. good point, yeah. You can't tax the air, man. That's why. <laughs> that too. And radio traditionally was, like, just spreads all over the world. I mean, that was the point of it, really, so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you said or not, Stephen, but the, apparently the uh, episodes uh, on BBC Sounds are have not yet been announced. No, they haven't. That's all, all speculation from the Radio Times, but um, but but I mean, you it, it, it does look like that's going to happen. So, but we'll see. We'll see November first. We'll see. The, everyone's waiting for Halloween. I'm looking forward to November first for two reasons: um, discounted Halloween candy and uh, Doctor <laughs> Who. Uh, mm-hmm. being on iPlayer. Not that I need it. I have literally every episode several times over. <laughs> but Yeah, I, but November, f- November 1st is when we get the concert, isn't it? The concert's on. That's right. The concert. Oh, my God. There's so much. There's too, no, there's too much Doctor Who. Cancel Doctor Who. What are you talking Who. about? Come uh, on. Kidding, this, is your, this is You love this. I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I hope that's... Is that on... I don't think that's on the Blu-ray. Is it? I didn't notice that on the extras, uh, on the... On the um, oh, great question. Special set. I've already closed the link, so there's no way of knowing now. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, so so maybe maybe I will have to find some advice on how to fire up VPNs to watch that on BBC yeah, One. From, from the bad kids out back who smoke at recess. Yeah, only asking, <laughs> you know, directions how to go away from there. That's the only reason I'm there uh, to yeah, watch there's, that concert. Yeah, just going through the list on the Doctor Who TV link, there's not... Uh... No mention of, of the concert for the uh, mm. specials Blu-ray set. Maybe it'll be on the Shooty Gatwa set. Maybe it'll be on the Christmas special. That's your lure in to, to buy the Shooty Gatwa Christmas special, which we don't have a name for yet. <laughs> that's kind of exciting. Uh, uh, we, uh, maybe that's what we'll... Um, it'll be on there. Pure speculation on my part, of course, but uh, pure imagination. <clears throat> uh, a world of pure imagination. Um Yeah. Also uh, coming to Radio 4 Extra at this anniversary month of November, Toby Haydokes, Surviving Doctor Who, an A to Z uh, love of Doctor Who. Um, he's actually been dropping a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of workshopping process on his uh, Patreon feed for his podcast, uh, Happy Times and Places. So so those of us who support his Patreon have had a little bit of a sneak preview for this, but uh, uh, but it was not in its complete form in any way, shape, or form. So, But that's coming November 18th. What day of the week is that? Is that a Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. That's right. Saturday before. I only know my days of the week, but it uh, aligns with Doctor Who broadcast. So... So Saturday the eighteenth on Radio Four Extra, that'll be that. So that's kind of cool. So there, all bunch um, of stuff. Just the the description the description for for the program mm-hmm. um, has the word anticipatement. <laughs> yep, that's great. Yep, that's uh, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> does, does is that, that just... a Doctor Who thing? Or did, we we didn't we didn't come. Well, up we with that. oh we did didn't know. I think I think yeah. it was Gareth Roberts who came up with it. I think or or he popularized Ooh. it at the time or something like that. Uh, um, but no, I think, I think a is actually is the end. Uh, spoiler alert. That might be his, uh, <laughs> the a might be for anticipation, which is kind of amusing, but, uh, no, it's been a thing in the ether. It's not us. We, we talked about it, but we didn't, uh, we yeah, didn't I'm, I'm sure. I think it's a British term. I think British fans can up with that. I'm just yeah. guessing, but no, that's, yeah, no. So there, anyway, November 18th, and that'll be the day after the uh, Children in Need, which where there's most likely going to be a Doctor Who uh, element there, because RTD teased that in um, 
DWM a while back, November for, for November seventeenth. Yep, yeah, November first. One, one of the dates to watch. November first, seventeenth, and the twenty third. None of which will be broadcast dates. That have much has been confirmed right there. I am I am intrigued to see what they're actually going to do for Doctor Who Day now, because you know it would be easy, I suppose, to just put an episode of Doctor Who on the twenty third. You know that'd mm-hmm. be something to do, but it's not going to be Doctor there. Who after party tenth anniversary reunion. <laughs> oh my god! You will never let it go, Chris. Yeah. And I love you for nope. it. Nope. Nope. And there's just going to be like, okay, here we are. And then there's your eight, eight chairs for all nine of you. Oh, you got to hurry. Hurry, Katie Manning. There's no chair for you. We're going to sit down. Oh, <laughs> but pretend there is just crouch and yeah. really hurt yourself doing that. Exactly. Don't know what's going to happen then. Can you imagine if they just like slipped out a missing episode on iPlayer on November 1st? Like, oh yeah, it's been there. There it is right there. Don't, don't start rumors. Like we're going to no. see, we got this covered saying we said, not, not even saying we said this, just saying as if it's a fact. No, but I mean, what did you see? Oh, what was the show now? Uh, it was like a precursor to Monty Python. It was like from the mid oh, sixties. Not, right. yeah, not yeah, the yeah. 19. Not or, that one. Not the, uh, no, the, the th- not the after the four, not the nineteen forty eight show. I can't remember the name of it. It's yeah. like it's kind of like no, drunk, an early version of drunk. Please, an idol in it or something. Uh, I don't remember who was in it, but but basically they found all these episodes. They were mislabeled in the archive or something, and then they just showed up on like the ITV streaming service. So they go, oh, by the way, there they are. They've been missing for sixty years, but actually they were just mislabeled, and now we just the there was no one. Another history of Britain. That was the one. That was the one. Yeah. Yeah, it just showed uh, up. Written, written, written by and starring uh, Michael Palin and Terry Jones. There you go. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, one, one six part series airing in 1969. Yep. And they had uh, misplaced basically episodes three through six, and they just showed up with no fanfare whatsoever. So, yeah. By the way, uh, am I the only person? Um, and I might be when I, whenever I have to ask if I'm the only person, I probably am. But uh, has anyone else mm-hmm. just popped along to Disney Plus to see if Doctor Who is on there yet? If there's a holding page or anything, there isn't. I have looked for the little tile at the bottom. You know, like, coming soon. I haven't seen that yet. I don't think they have, I think they've gotten rid of that generally. Yeah, they don't have coming soon, I don't think, on Disney Plus. So I don't think. Uh... They did. They did for a while with like sort of longer rectangle oh, tiles. Oh, I didn't but know they, that. That's yeah. gone now for whatever oh, reason. Oh, that's too bad. Well, that's not going to stop me looking every damn day, though, from now until November 25th, but anyway, exciting times. Um, Oh, where are we at in the news? I don't even know anymore. Uh, there's big, a big finish. There's some big finish stuff. Uh, a second uh, box set of the Sarah Jade Adventures, Ronnie takes on the world of Revenge of Wormwood, returning, uh, featuring the return of Samantha Bond, who played uh, Wormwood in... In the very first episode, Invasion of the Bane, back in 2007, when every single member of the main cast was six years old, Um, (laughs) because they're very young. Including (laughs) Wormwood. Including Wormwood, yes. Miss Muddy Penny herself from the Dalton era. Um, That's coming out in January. And uh, uh, Bigfoot, Tom Baker's uh, fourth Doctor Adventures, Storm of the Sea Devils, will be uh, spaced out. There's three different stories we spaced out through 2024. That was announced also this past week. Um, It's London Comic Con this week. MCM London Comic Con. I still don't know what MCM stands for. We tried to determine what that was. Uh, Sounds for 1900. <laughs> there it is right there. Perfect. Well done. Good job on your Roman numerals, uh, Chris. That was good stuff. Um, that is happening this weekend. There's a, there's an official Doctor Who booth where you can look at the, co- it's basically the same booth from Comic-Con. It's like the same costumes, the same booth and everything that was at San Diego Comic-Con is there this weekend. But also uh, Dan Slott's uh, uh, Doctor Who um, comic, the one shot is uh, out early this weekend because of that. So you can, you can get them there if you haven't already. This, this, the, the convention will be mostly over by the time you, you, uh, you hear this. But um, so, so there we go. That's, that's, there's, that's a thing. They have something called. The Meep Meep in Your Pocket t-shirt for sale. Oh, fun. <laughs> I don't know what that is, and I'm not sure I want to. Well, it's, it's a t-shirt with a tiny little meep where a pocket would be in the, you know, across the left breast. Yeah. You know, beep the meep from the Starbies. I, I'm aware of yeah. this. Yes. I know of his work. Yeah. The, um... That comes out the the Doctor Who the Fourth Doctor comic bundle with which features the Star Beast comes out this week as well from from Panini. So that's the thing to look out for too because I, I might pick that up because I might I might read a comic book Warren. I might read a Doctor Who related comic because oh, it's, it, it's a step. It's it's a step forward. I, I know suppose. it ties in with uh, with something that's going to be on TV. So I feel like I wouldn't mind knowing about it a little bit just to see if I can pick up on things. So 
It's a rare thing. Um, you can also get a whole bunch of uh, comic books and other things in the uh, latest Humble Bundle, Doctor Who themed Humble Bundle, which has a whole bunch of comics from the um, East, uh, well, uh, IDW days and a whole bunch of source books from the role playing games and big finish. Oh, you know, the usual mishmash is, of things from Humble Bundle. It is, it is more of a mishmash than ever. This is like just the weirdest combination of things. Well, the, it starts like the top of it is like a lot of tenant heavy stuff, which I suppose, you know, tenants coming back for three nights only. Yeah. So, you know, I could see that. But then yeah. it, it diverts. But then off there's like, things. there's like BBC comic things or whatever with uh-huh. Smith and Capaldi and, and uh, yeah, RPG stuff. And it's just, just a weird, just a weird mix. I bit. mean, it's going to hit pe- different people's interests. It's pretty cheap. So why not? And it's yeah. for a good cause. It's all for children they need. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like I probably have most of this stuff from other humble <laughs> bundles, I think. I'm not too sure. But uh, so maybe I won't be getting this this time around. But uh, but if you want to, links in the show notes. As I say, it yeah. all goes to charity. So yeah. right now it's uh, 20, 24, 24, 46 Canadian uh, as a minimum to get all the stuff. That's uh, pay at least. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, it's a very good deal. The entire 36 item bundle is also 18 item bundles and five item bundles, but come on. Buy the lot, buy the lot, and support us. Uh, what a good cause. BBC Children in need. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Um, also cool, there's a, there's a, there's a thing called Samaravans. It's basically artwork from people about caravans and Samaritans. Samaritans caravans smearvans that's how that happens um uh it's an idea that's been going around and now they've had celebrities uh paint and draw pictures of caravans and stuff for to be sold off for auction jody whitaker has done one uh with a theme around like basically her 13th doctor outfit which is kind of cool it's got, got sort of the rainbow um stripe that she had on the front there and it's uh, sort of the coat the color of the coat is the color of the the caravan and there's you've got in roman numerals uh 13 mm-hmm. on the front, 13 number plate front yeah. license plate there so so that's kind of cool so so there you go that's uh that's a thing that's also happening so read about that they, read about that in the show notes raised 37 and a half thousand pounds with the that effort very nice that's good very nice and in the kicker, I guess, well, we'll end it on this. Um, Doctor Who fans, it's on BBC, CBBC News Round, I reported this. Doctor Who fans attempt to knit the longest Doctor mm. Who scarf uh, <laughs> in Somerset I, right now. Hmm. Uh, sent this link to sent this link to Kat the other day, and she took one look at it, and she was like, the colors are all wrong. Like, or what'd you say? <laughs> does it, does it, is it actually a Doctor Who, is it actually a Doctor Who scarf when the colors are all wrong? Yes. But, I mean, it's the thought, it's the thought that counts. It's, a, it's, it's not. A, dimensions in time of scarves. Once you get past like 28 feet and it's, uh, it currently is, um, 23 I, I, feet it well, says. That's not long enough. Currently. <laughs> it's not even, that's shorter than the actual, the, the, the screen accurate one. Was season, eight, season 18. Season one, 18 yeah. was 28 feet by the end of it. Yeah. Um, mm. Uh, once you get past that, you're just inventing colors anyway. Go for it. Go nuts. You know, what, what makes an official Doctor Who scarf? Sure. There's like what? Six Nerd or... judgment. That's what. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously Kat, uh, just cast an eye on this. Yeah, I think, I think there are probably some on Ravelry that will, um, debate you on that. Like I said, nerd judgment. Yeah. I don't care. I, I love seeing <laughs> fan main scarves. I think it's really neat. And you know what? Not throw in different cat. Throw in different I colors there. Your yeah, I would love to see a, a really. I mean, the, the you know the original is multicolored. There's a whole bunch of I, you know. I'd love to see like a pride themed Doctor Who scarf with just the colors of the pride flag and stuff. Like it'd be kind of cool. Um, this is how's a whole. Uh, just looking at the picture. Actually, looking at this picture, it feels like it's longer than the twenty three feet already, and it's going to be going until January twenty seventh. Um, where this event is happening, where you, where people are knitting. Uh, Adding onto the scarf, so go nuts. Add whatever color you want. Damn it! Yeah, I, I seem to recall in some cosplay corners, there's a whole thing about screen accuracy, and it's just an excuse for nerds to yell at each other. Basically, I mean, there, I, I'm sure there's a certain amount of gatekeeping being behind things like that, but but by the same token, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you see it on the screen. Mm-hmm. You look at this, and it's not remotely. Close. It's like, <laughs> I, mean, I, can, I, I get I can, where I you're can, coming from. I, can, I get I where cats come under, from too. I can but. understand the. I can understand the um, frustration. <laughs> well, how about it's this? It's not. a Doctor Who scarf, but it's lowercase D and a lowercase W. 
<laughs> so it's not no. So, uh, so it's not official. Yeah. I suppose. I mean the the and the photo. <laughs> it had a it had a risk of being official otherwise. <laughs> exactly. If it's a capital yeah. D and a capital W, that's definitely official. Yeah, it's definitely official. Well, as as it is, I mean, they, 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 this, there's it says it's part of a big Doctor Who art exhibition. D R Who. So that's true. That ain't <laughs> official. I'm not gatekeeping the alphabet. Who cares? Just <laughs> have fun, people. That's all that matters. Yeah. I think it is. I think if you use D, I mean, John Pertwee's credits is Der Who. So, yes, I mean, yes, I mean the Absorbaloff is official Doctor Who. So, I mean, yeah. go with that. <laughs> like, totally is. Yeah. And there, and he's widely loathed. So, there you are. Go with it. I love it. I love it. I love creativity like this. I think it's great. Oh, yeah. That that part of it is, is fantastic for sure. <laughs> but the colors are entirely wrong. They should be working to a set pattern. Damn it. You Some stupid. would say. Some would say. <laughs> Some would say. And with that. And on that note, as you say, Warren, yep. Uh, that draws us to a close of this very news uh, heavy episode of Doctor Who colon Radio Free Scarrow. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about a book, uh, Adventures Across Space and Time, with everyone involved in it. Paul Booth, Tansy Raider Roberts, Matt Hills, and Joy Piedmont. Uh, that's coming up next week on top of a whole bunch of other news who knows but uh, it'll be november now so there's going to be a bunch of stuff coming out leading up to of course uh doctor who uh and the return of doctor who on tv we actually talk about new episodes again so that's exciting as well so join us next week and forever after that folks won't you uh until next time i am steven in edmonton or in vancouver and chris in edmonton so long for now You've been listening to Radio Free Scaro. Find us online at radiofreescaro.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scaro. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scaro. Thank you.